can almost smell it in the air. That slight crisp and cool breeze that signifies a change. One that's going to bring all the little ghouls and goblins out in search of a sugar fix. It's also the time of year where I take a look back at all the watches I've reviewed and pick out the best ones when it comes to Loom. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and welcome to Lumaween 2021. Believe it or not, this is actually the third Lumaween video I've done. And as a Loom nut, it's always one of my favorite videos to put together for the year. Now, if you've never caught Lumaween before, the criteria to be included here is pretty simple. The first of which is that this has to be a watch that I reviewed since the last Lumaween. And the second is that this has to be a watch that has Loom that goes above and beyond. And that can either be in intensity and longevity or even creativity when it comes to the design. And this year in particular, I've noticed an emphasis on creativity over longevity, as there were quite a few watches that I saw that didn't really have that long-term oomph, but they did have some killer designs, which is also a perfect way to describe the first watch on our list. So coming in at number five, we have the Phoebus Apollo. This one by far is one of the most interesting designs I've ever seen to come from Phoebus, or really anywhere for that matter. Phoebus went out of their way to make this a watch that really stands out, and especially with this multicolored sandwich dial and a titanium case. Although as different as this thing is, I think it goes without saying that this won't be for everyone. But what I really love here is just how creative Phoebus got when using Loom with the design. It's unique, and in a lot of ways, it's just bonkers to look at. Now Phoebus has a reputation when it comes to Loom and longevity, in fact, the Phoebus Great Wall is one of the best watches I've seen for that. But unfortunately, this year as a whole, they kind of let that reputation slip. And this watch specifically was just kind of okay when it came to that. And especially with the use of black loom on a couple sections of the dial, as that black loom doesn't have near the staying power of BGW9 or C3. Although that is specific to this colorway and the others may not have had that issue. But despite all of that, I think this watch was just cool enough that it had to be included here. Now everyone loves a Flieger, but let's be honest here, when it comes to the design, it's fairly standard and fairly basic. But you know, when the lights go out, there's just something breathtakingly cool about that design when it's all lit up, and especially with the Type B Fliegers. So coming in at number four, we have the Escapement Time Flieger which I think is one of the best budget watches around, and proves you don't have to spend a lot of money to get something that can last you through the night. Escapement Time is a very small brand on AliExpress, and they only have a few different models listed. It's one of those brands that a lot of you said I needed to check out, and you were all right. For 90 bucks, this thing is hard to beat. It's amazingly good with a gorgeous looking dial and crisp blued hands. It's so good that it can probably give a few German Fliegers a run for their money. And that also includes the Loom, as it just looks fantastic when the lights go out. It has this blue BGW9 setup, and the entire dial is lit up here. Unfortunately, that dial does fade out a little earlier than I would like, but the hands do stay lit up and even surpass those of my Seiko Turtle. And when you consider how much this thing costs, that's pretty amazing. Now, this watch was a flat out steal when I paid 90 bucks for it, but unfortunately Escapement Time has kind of gotten the notice that they're now a cult hit, so they've raised the price up a bit to 120, which overall I think is still pretty good for what you're getting. Now, they also have released a 40 millimeter version with a PT5000 movement, so if you thought this one at 42 was too big, go check out that one. So far, every Lumaween has had a Zelos on its list, and this year is no different, as Zelos and Loom kind of go hand in hand. So coming in at number three, we have the Zelos Horizons 43mm, which for whatever reason was the only Zelos I wound up reviewing last year, but it left a pretty big impression. At 43mm, it's a little larger than I would typically like, but it's a quality watch as always. It has a very similar galoche dial effect to the Nova Dress watch that they put out, so it was kind of interesting seeing that in diver form. And this dial is just gorgeous in that teal color. But we're more interested in the loom here, and as always, Zealous did a fantastic job, where they went the extra distance by utilizing X1 grade C3 and BGW9 on the dial. Not only does this look fantastic, but it was even able to keep up with the Phoebus Great Wall which is one of the two best watches I've ever seen when it comes to Loom. So absolutely fantastic Loom on this one, which you kind of expect because it is a Zelos. 
However, one place you don't expect to find good loom is from Citizen. People tend to praise Seiko Lumabrite as one of the best things out there, but Citizen often gets overlooked, and I think mistakenly so. Which our next watch on the list easily shows. So coming in at number two, we have the BN0151 Citizen EcoDrive ProMaster. Now as far as Citizen's ProMaster lineup goes, the BN0151 is fairly entry level and fairly affordable. But just because it's entry level doesn't mean that it's not capable. For a little over 200 bucks, you get a highly effective solar powered tool watch, complete with a diver's 200 meter rating, as well as a ton of loom. I'm not sure what loom Citizen uses, but whatever they're doing, they're doing right. Not only does this watch easily outperform a Seiko Turtle that costs twice as much, but it's also able to keep up with the Orient Star Diver, which is one of the best watches I've ever seen. Which makes this, for the price, one of the best grab-and-go tool watches you can find. It's tough, capable, and will easily last you through the night. Now, before we talk about the number one watch for this year, I do have a few honorable mentions, and probably more than I've had in the years past. But that's because there were a lot of really cool watches this year. So first off, I want to talk about a trio of watches, all three of which had really cool designs, but lacked any real sort of oomph when it came to staying power. The first of which is the Ver D5 Tropic. It's a cool, creative, and honestly mesmerizing design, especially when it starts to spin like a roulette wheel. Now, this is one of the more interesting dive watches I've run across, and I really wished it lasted just a little bit longer. The second up is the Kaizen that I reviewed not that long ago. Now, one look at this compressor style watch, and you know it marches to a different beat. And it's a beat that really comes to life when the loom lights up, making you think that you are in Tron. It's really a shame that this Kickstarter watch didn't get funded, as I would have loved for this thing to get some improved loom on it. It's an odd design, but crank that loom up to 11, and I think you'd have a winner. And we also have the Unidive PX01, complete with a glow-in-the-dark unicorn. If that doesn't give you a Halloween nightmare, I don't know what will. The PX01 is something that is a bit different. And one thing that I love is how every aspect of it is loomed up. But while that black loom paint looks great on the stainless steel dial, that black loom lacks any sort of staying power. And all of these really cool little elements just fade into the darkness. However, luckily the hands and the bezel here are still pretty good. So that is one saving grace. And lastly, straight out of Chicagoland, we have a pair of watches that I haven't reviewed yet. But hopefully I will pretty soon. So here we have the sweeping quartz and automatic versions of the Far and Sweat Wayfinder. The sweeping quartz is particularly cool with a fully loomed dial. And here it's utilizing four different colors of Superluminova to really bring that map to life. It's something I haven't seen before and it's just really cool. So these two should be pretty fun to review. Now, the top watch on this list is one that I only got to spend a little bit of time with. But in that short amount of time, I was impressed. This is a watch that can easily go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best I've seen. But the trick is, is that it's a field watch, not a diver. So coming in at number one for Lumaween 2021 is the Swiss watch company Bunker, complete with its 20 layers of X1 grade Super Luminova. The Bunker is one of the best field watches I've seen. I think the current price is around 430 bucks, and for that you get a thin lightweight titanium case paired with a Swiss Salita SW200. And one thing that I really appreciate is the dial design. When you look at it, there's no question here that this is a field watch. But the dial has a very separate feel from your standard World War II style field watches, like say the Hamilton khakis. And the blue prototype I got to look at even had a little bit of a Nomos vibe to it. So it's hands down a great field watch. But where Swiss watch company went all out was with the loom. Now putting 20 layers of X1 grade Super Luminova on a diver is extreme. But putting that same amount on a field watch is just plain crazy. But this is the kind of crazy that people love. And as I said, this is a watch that can go toe to toe with the best I've ever seen. And for a field watch, that's just insane. And with that, Lumaween 2021 comes to a close. Now, stay safe out there, and let me know what you think about all of this down below, and especially if you have any suggestions for next year's Little Weaned. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time. Till next time.